What's up? What's happening? What is popping? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another great edition of Smell with this Pizza. I'm Simone bringing you guys daily sports talk. So if you're new here, if you're old here and haven't already subscribed to my channel, stop what you're doing. Leave a comment, subscribe, keep rocking with me. Also, make sure you check out the links down below. The first one is to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel. The second link is to shop the official Smell with the Spears. It's a merch collection. But y'all, if you do not do anything else, turn your notification bells on so you don't miss a single video or a single live stream. And I will be going live more in the month of May. So make sure you have your notification bells on. But y'all, oh my goodness, it's so bittersweet. Um, the 2024 NFL Draft is complete. Uh, we're going to get into the draft recap today. And then throughout the week, this week, we are going to get more into uh, position groups and position battles and, you know, the full rebuild of the, the Eagles team. But today we are going to get into the initial draft recap and we're going to talk about our undrafted free agent signings. But like I said, make sure you're here all week because then every day, each week, we're going to get more in-depth into different position groups. But let's go ahead and start with the draft recap. First of all, the draft was so much fun. I give Howie an a, 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 a plus, a triple A plus, you know what I'm saying? Like the big old battery, well, the, the little batteries. Um, a triple A plus for this draft. Um, I feel like he addressed every single position need um, for the Eagles. So round one, pick number 22, not having to trade up, being able to stay put was insane. Um, and getting Quinion Mitchell, cornerback out of Toledo, getting the best cornerback in the draft without having to trade up, which we all thought we were going to have to trade up um, for a top corner in this draft. And we did not. We got Quinion, speedy, shifty guy, uh, very twitchy, great instincts, great reaction. Um, to come in here and probably be a starting cornerback day one. So to go on this draft and get starting day one talent at 22 in our biggest area of need, which is the secondary, is just amazing. So the Eagles ended up making nine trades. That's like the most trades ever rec um, recorded since trades started being recorded, draft trades started being recorded in 1990. Howie moved up twice in this draft and moved back seven times in this draft, um, which just goes to show how active he is, how engaged he is, um, and how in tune he is with the draft board. And it goes to show with these amazing picks that he made. So round two, we moved up 10 spots to draft Cooper DeGene, cornerback out of Iowa. Cooper DeGene was somebody we were expected to maybe take at 22 if Terrion and Quinion went off the board quick. Cooper was somebody we were expected to maybe take at 22, and he was there for the taking in the second round. Howie being super aggressive, going up and grabbing him at 40. Our secondary was the worst last season, and already in the first two picks in the draft, we have improved the secondary immensely with Cooper DeGene and um, Quinion Mitchell, and these guys are going to be the faces. If, you know, things pan out how they're supposed to, the faces of the Eagles secondary for years to come. So shout out to Howie for just addressing um, the secondary. Like, that's big. We have not drafted a corner in the first round since 2002. So Howie is switching G up. He changing, you know what I'm saying? They say men don't change. But Howie Roseman has shown that men can change, okay? So round three, um, the Eagles kept trading back, kept trading back. We originally got a third-round pick from Washington in that trade with Cooper DeGene, but we traded back several times. We ended up getting Jalex Hunt and Edge out of Houston Christian. Jalex Hunt is somebody who's going to come in here, be a rotational piece for us off the edge, and with Josh Sweat, Getting older, eventually going to move on. Brandon Graham on his last um, farewell tour year. Brandon Graham is not going to be here next season. We do need to address the defensive end position. We do need to get younger there. We do need to get more pieces there, get more star power in there. And there we go uh, with Jalex Hunt. So the Eagles saw a lot in Jalex. Um, was kind of surprised to a lot of people coming from a smaller school, Houston Christian. But Jalen Hunt, super excited to be an Eagle. This guy is a super athlete. He used to play safety. He used to play wide receiver. And then he's converted um, to being an edge rusher. So we know we need more oomph off the edge last season. We were terrible last season when it came to um, um, pass rush and pressures. 
So again, addressing two big needs on defense, the secondary, and also the pass rush. So then in round four, we get running back Will Shipley, adding uh, running back out of Clemson, adding that lightning to Saquon Barkley's thunder. So we went defense with our first three picks, and then we switched and pivot over to the offense, which, which still needed a lot of help last season. So we had Saquon Barkley, we got Will Shipley, a nice balance, a nice one-two punch in the running back room. And Will Shipley is as versatile as they come, good pass, a pass catcher as well. Um, so super excited to see what this offense looks like. Then at number round five with our next pick, we stick with the offense. We get Anaya Smith, a wide receiver out of Texas A&M. Um, we needed that. We needed that. Anaya was one um, going to come in and compete for wide receiver three. Like I said earlier, we have Devontae Smith. We have A.J. Brown. But behind Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown, it's a huge gap in the game, baby. It's a huge gap in that wide receiver talent. Um, and we need somebody who could really be a legit, true star wide receiver three. And Anias is going to come in and compete with that. So then we end up trading up for Jeremiah Trotter Jr., a legacy pick, linebacker out of Clemson, son of the Jeremiah Trotter, Eagles legend, Eagles legacy. Um, so it's just amazing that we were able to go get Jeremiah Trotter in the fifth round. Um it was speculated that he could go third round. It was speculated that he could go fourth round, but I saw a lot of people saying third round. So the fact that he was there for us to be able to trade up for in the fifth round, it's just giving, it was made to be, it was meant to be. I'm just, that's just like the, the biggest cherry um, of this draft. And of course we need linebacker help as well. So we added Devin White this off season. We added Jeremiah Trotter um, Jr. as well. So linebacker room revamp, which we needed it to be. So round five, we go, um, we get a guard, Trevor Keegan out of Michigan. Michigan winners, you know what I'm saying? Trevor Keegan going to come in here, compete, um, be one of the new faces of the Eagles offensive line with Jason Kelsey moving on. Lane Johnson's going to be moving on soon. So we do have to get some young talent in here on the offensive line. And again, how we waited until the fifth round to go offensive line, that's crazy. Let me tell you, if you made it far this far in the video, if you made it this far in the video, hashtag down below, men do change. Because Howie Roseman is proving to the girls that men can change, okay? This offseason, he gave a running back a bag, okay? He drafted a corner in the first round, and he didn't take an offensive lineman until the fifth round? Who is this Howie Roseman? Who is this? He is completely changed for the better, changed for the better. You know what I'm saying? So then round six, Johnny Wilson, wide receiver out of Florida State. Johnny Wilson, top in the ACC in contested catches. Um, also with Trevor Keegan, the guard, before I wanted to mention, he didn't give up a single sack last season. But yeah, Johnny Wilson, wide receiver, going offense again. This is a guy that, again, like we talked about, Anaya is going to come in and compete for that wide receiver two spot. I mean, wide receiver three spot. <laughs> wide receiver three spot. Um, yeah, so I, I love it. And then last pick, we get center out of NC State University. Y'all see it, the big wolf pack, Dylan. Um, I want to say it's McMahon, McMahon. I was saying McMahon, but apparently it's McMahon. Um, Dylan McMahon, center out of North Carolina State University. Shout out to the wolf pack. I actually was able to do an interview with Dylan um, in February, a pre-draft interview. So go ahead and make sure you check that out on my page. But this is a guy that's going to come in, of course, to Jeff Dowling University. Um, could be a potential... He could play guard and center, but this is going to be a guy that can, um, you know, be next next man up, compete next man up, um, see who's going to be the next Jason Kelsey in Philly. But, y'all, that's the draft recap. Now we have to get into the undrafted free agents. So we only signed seven undrafted free agents this season um, because Howie did not like this draft class. It, it was evident. He, he traded back seven times. Um, so it just goes to show he really wasn't – rocking with this draft class so we only signed seven undrafted free agents we signed um Gottlieb a DJ an offensive lineman out of Maryland we signed Anim Dankwa an offensive tackle out of Howard I did do an interview with Anim Dankwa very tall um gives Lane Johnson bill I have that interview with Anim on my page go check that interview out I did that interview in February a pre-draft interview um, so that was the first offensive tackle that they took. Um, it happened to be an undrafted free agent. Then we got Andre Sam, safety out of LSU. Kendall Milton, a running back out of Georgia. Gabe Hall, defensive tackle, Baylor. Um, 
McAllen Castles, tight end out of Tennessee. I saw a lot of y'all wanting tight end in the draft. I don't know why we already made tight end moves this offseason. And Talit Keaton, wide receiver out of Marshall. So, you know, it's always one undrafted free agent that might stick around. So you got to keep your eye out on those guys. Um, but again, I really love this draft. I feel like we address so many different things and we, we really prioritize what we need to prioritize while addressing other big areas of need. So A++ draft. This draft experience was amazing. Thank you guys so much for following my draft coverage. Thank you so much for supporting me and rocking with me all the time. It means everything. I really, really, really appreciate you guys. Make sure you have your notification bells on because like I said, it's just getting started for the 2024-2025 season.